The Vision of Theophilus, Part 2. Just a bit of a recap. Jesus is speaking about the blessedness that Mary had requested, about where they first sought shelter from Herod. All those who come to this house with faith and worship and pray therein shall be blessed, and I will forgive all their sins if they intend not to revert to them, and I will count them among the saints. If any of those who are in distress, trouble, or loss come to this holy place and worship and pray in it, and demand congress things, I will grant their requests and all their demands. If the one who comes to be a husbandman, I will bless his crops, and if he be a shepherd, I will bless his flocks, and if he be a clerk, I will bless his pen. If any of those who are versed in any craft come and pray in this house, I will bless their craft. If any of those who are affected of disease of any kind whatsoever come and pray in this holy house, I will heal all their bodies. If any of those who are in trouble or anguish on account of children who have died, or on account of beasts or of robbers or of kings, remember this holy house in which we are, and pray to me and to my good and compassionate Father, who is in heaven, I will deliver them from all their trials and troubles. O oh, Mary, my mother, this house in which we are will contain holy monks on whom no ruler of the world shall be able to inflict any injury, because it became a refuge to us. And any barren woman who beseeches me with a pure heart and remembers this house, I will give her sons. All the people who came into this place with ex photos and offerings for your holy name. I will inscribe my name on their offerings and on their sacrifices as it happened to Abel in the days of when he offered sacrifices before me. I have anathemized this town, which did not receive us in our exile, and blessed all the villages that surround it. Let my blessing and my protection be on their inhabitants, on their children, on their property, on their land, and all that which they possess. Let no one who hates my name ever inhabit them, because you dwelt in this place. There will be in this place a blessed congregation, who will remember and bless my name, and pray to me at all times. So gain strength against all their adversaries. As to this house, nothing shall be demolished from it, nor shall anything be added to it. I tell you now that if any chief or ruler should from this time inflict any harm on it, I will put him to shame and confusion for all time because I inhabit it, and the angels provided for us in it, and since I did not find any earthly food in it. I will place in it my blessing and the protection of my Father for ever and ever. Any one who comes to this place and honors my name in your name, his house will be full of all good things. Those women in travail who will remember me and remember the fatigue that you endured with me, I will hear them, I will hear their prayers, and they shall be relieved. O oh, my holy virgin mother, there will be sanctuaries built under your name and my name in those places in which you have halted, and my blessing and protection of my Father will dwell in this house for ever and ever. Amen. And we all said, Amen. After my son had spoken thus, we rose up and descended from the mountain. We reached the town of Eshmanian and its inhabitants received us with great joy and jubilation. When morning came, I carried my son on my arms, and we came to the sea where we looked for a ship, but found none ready. Then my beloved son made the sign of the cross on the water, and it became like a ship before us. We then went on board, and we arrived at Nazareth, and gave thanks to God, and he appeared also several times after his ascent to heaven. One day I was in the house of Mary, mother of John, who was afterwards called Mark the Evangelist. It is he who came to the land of Egypt, the inhabitants of which believed through him. When he announced to them the kingdom of God, it is the one whose inheritance and office you took, O Theophilus. The apostles were also there, and they alluded to the wickedness done by Judas to my beloved son, the true son of God. And I answered and said to them while weeping bitterly, O my brethren and beloved of my son, I testify to you that from the days of my annunciation by the angel Gabriel down to this hour, I have wept because of the cruel things that the Jews did to me, 
and to my son, and when they slapped my face on account of my conception and the birth of my child. And Peter answered and said to me, O lady of us all, we implore you to reveal to us your trials, so that we may hear them, and so that when we go and preach the kingdom of heaven to mankind, we may remember you and narrate all that happened to you. And I began to narrate to them what happened to be from the day I went to Elizabeth, and how my son was born in a place while I was alone, and what happened in my journey to the land of Egypt, and my coming to this desert place, and the injustice done to us by the accursed Herod. When I narrated this while weeping to all the apostles, there were present with me Mary Magdalene, Hannah, and Salome. In that hour my Lord and my son revealed himself to me in a sitting posture, while the seraphim Gabriel and Michael and an innumerable angels were glorifying him. And he stood in the middle and said to us, Peace be with you all. And we rose up immediately, and we worshipped at his feet. And my son turned to me, and he said to me, O oh, my holy virgin mother, why are you in tears and anguish? Lo, I have prepared for you in heaven joy and gladness which have no end. Do not weep and lament because of my death. You should rather rejoice at my resurrection from the dead, because I have saved the world. You who walked with me in foreign countries, and in a forsaken desert as far as the forsaken place of which I will bless with my holy hands, before any other church is dedicated to my name. In that hour he commanded a luminous cloud which came down and carried us all and placed us in the holy house. O Theophilus, and it was the third hour of the day, which was the sixth of month of Hater, which corresponds with the second day of October. When the apostles were ready for the consecration of the church, Gabriel and Michael carried the vessels containing the water of which my beloved son sprinkled on the church. I and the twelve apostles were present at the consecration of this house, and Mary Magdalene and Salome were also present, and there was no church built in the world before it. And this church was consecrated by our Savior, Jesus Christ, before the apostles went out to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. At the time of the consecration, he uttered the following words. The hands that have fashioned you, O Adam, have consecrated this house, and the hands in which nails have been driven on the Golgotha have blessed this house. Amen, amen. And we all answered and said, Amen. Afterwards, we found vestments ready along with the ritual used by the church. When everything was ready, he ordered Peter to celebrate the Mass, and then the Holy Spirit came down. He then commanded the apostles to remember their parents who had passed away, and he ordered also in that hour the souls of their parents who had departed to come and enter the sanctuary, and they came at that moment in the form in which they were with us in the flesh, and he baptized them with water, that they remained from the consecration of the church. And he gave his holy body and ordered them to say the Mass and to remember at that moment of the offering of the sacrifice upon the holy altars their parents who had passed away. And our Lord fortified them, comforted them, and gave them peace. In that very moment a large bird flew from heaven and came down carrying with it all good things and manner of wines and delicacies. And it came down in the center of the church, and we took from it what we wanted. The angels stood then above our heads like deacons, and the apostles were joyful and glad because they had seen their parents and because of the glory and majesty of that hour. And our Savior spoke with them and said to them, Let this day be a remembrance to you forever, and I will command that a church be built under your name on this mountain. And the apostles answered and said to him, Glory be to you, and honor, worship, power, and omnipotence belong to you, because you have exalted us above all the creation. And a cloud took us again, and placed us at sunset in the house in which we were previously in Jerusalem. We came back to Jerusalem on the same day we had left it. This is what you asked me to tell you, O Theophilus. I told you all at this moment. Tell to all the world what I have narrated to you, and what has happened to us, and write it down to us as a memorial for ever and ever. Arise now, and offer sacrifice for the monks, 
and for all the people who have congregated here today, because I will bless them before I go, as this day is the day of my commemoration and of my leaving of the body. As to you, be of good cheer, because in you remaining days no harm and no anguish will befall you, and no evil of any kind will affect this church in your time. This story was told to me, and these words were uttered to me, Theophilus, the servant of Christ, and your servant, O my brethren and my beloved. I have narrated to you today, to your love, what the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, narrated to me. O you all who believe in Christ, God knows that I have not added anything to, nor taken away anything from what Our Lady Mary, Mother of God, said to me, and what I learned from her, as to, as to you, Listen to it, believe in it, and let your heart not be in doubt. And I, Theophilus, answered and said to Our Lady, Blessed are you among women, O Our Lady Mary, Mother of God. We came today and rejoiced at the sweetness of your words, which are like honeycomb, and like the wine that maketh glad the heart of man. We have acknowledged the honor and glory of this holy house from the fact that the Lord of this world and his holy virgin mother dwelt in it. O my beloved, None of those who intend to go back to their sins should enter the holy house because of the Lord Jesus Christ and his holy virgin mother dwelt in it. And because all the hierarchies of the holy angels observe this day as a feast in purity and holiness, no thief and no one who is under the influence of sin should enter this house because Paul says, Neither those who commit sins, nor the fornications, nor the publicans, nor the idolaters, nor those who perpetrate other crimes shall inherit the kingdom of God. We ought to also remember that we shall leave our bodies and go to God our Lord, and that we shall rise again in that place of truth, where we shall answer for all that we have done, whether it be good or bad. We should also refrain our souls from theft, our bodies from fornication, and our eyes from evil sights, diabolical passions, and covetousness. We should also refrain our tongues from all bad and impure curses, from oath and from all evil things which bring no honor but dishonor. We should also refrain our soul from hatred and false witness. Let us extirpate from our hearts these and similar things, because it is they that lead men to hell, the fire of which is not quenched. Let us purify our bodies from sin and then partake of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and be worthy of the blessings of our Holy Lady Mary, the Mother of God, and observe her feast today. What good can a fornicator derive and gain can occur to him if he comes to the Holy Mary, the Mother of the King of Kings? and enters her holy house while he does not repent of his iniquity. And what utility can an adulteress derive from entering his holy house in order to be worthy of the one who brought forth the Christ, unless she confesses her sins? She will then pray and implore her son and her Lord on her behalf, because she is full of mercy. We ought also to carry our offerings and bring our ex photos with a pure heart, and then stretch our hands to her holy Son, and ask for his body and his innocent blood. Blessed be he who comes to this house, because he will meet with good things in this world, and when he leaves this earthly body, he will go to the kingdom of heaven. Woe to the one who commits a sin in this house, because God will be angry with him as he was with Herod. Blessed be he who hears and believes, and does not entertain any doubt concerning you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the one who sees the holy house because the Lord will place him in the bosom of our father Abraham and will answer his prayers in this world through the good works that he will do. Woe to the one who vows something to this house and refuses to acknowledge his vow and does not fulfill it. The Holy Spirit will be far from such a one. Were it not that I see the greatness of the number of the people assembled here and their joy on the occasion of this high feast, I would have told many more miracles in order to exalt his holy house. This house is the beginning of the forgiveness of sins. This house is all 
of it benediction, and any one who enters into it shall be blessed by God and by his mother, the Holy Virgin. This house is the tryst of the Lord, of his angels, of his apostles, and of the heavenly hierarchies. And were it not for the fact that I am entrusted with the care of the diocese and the congregation of the orthodoxy, I would not have left this place till the day of my death. God, however, will count to me what I have intended to do. May God bless the young and the old among you, and may he grant to you the good reward of your labors in coming to this place from far and to near. May he bless your fields and hold your believing kings in his keeping. May he lay your enemies under your feet, and sow peace and concord in the churches and in the monasteries all the days of your life, in order that you may observe this day with joy and partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May he forgive you your old sins and place his fear in your hearts in order that you may be cons consecrated today to him. May you be in his keeping in order that you may reach your homes in the peace of God. Amen. May he grant the blessings of this holy house to you and to anyone who sets foot in this place, which is the place in which dwelt our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy mother. And as he granted you to assemble and congregate into this holy house, he is able to make you worthy of assembling together in his kingdom with his saints. And I, Cyril, was with my father, the patriarch Theophilus, and heard from his holy mouth this story which I have written down. When the people heard this discourse, they rejoiced greatly and raised their voices and glorified God with a high and loud voice. Glory be to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now, always, and forever, and ever. Amen. Here ends the third book containing the vision of the Holy Theophilus, Patriarch of the Alexandria. May his prayer be with us. Amen.